Uh, Clinton Cohen, 4611 South Washington Court. <clears throat> Good morning, Council, Mayor. Um, I would like to remind the Council members of the City Code of Ethics for Council members, Section 2.04.050. There are well-known connections between several members of this council and one of the parties involved in this matter. I could emphasize some of those connections, but that would be a little redundant because those have been emphasized time and time again. These connections have been highlighted, but some members of this body are more connected than others. I am asking that some of you abstain from action, not because it is required, but because it is the right thing to do. There is nothing wrong with abstaining from action Abstention shows character. Thank you. Okay. Next person. Good morning, Mr. Mayor and fellow council members. So Susan Estes, 151 South Whittier with Americans for Prosperity. I a while back, my good friend John Todd started doing some research on this project, and he'd send me an email and uh, show me what he found. And as he found things, I had more questions. So I have a map to present to you today that is the basis for these questions. Here we have our catalyst site, the West Bank, received two proposals, one the RIV and one River Vista. The RIV is a lease deal. So it's very difficult to break that bid down to what it costs per square foot, and it's also not the deal that received the highest rating. So I looked mostly at River Vista and started analyzing that deal. And when I boiled it all down, it came out to they were going to be paying 47 cents per square foot. And that kind of seemed very shocking to me. That seemed uh, like a very low price for very valuable land. So I went back and looked at the proposals again, and I realized that Mr. Clark valued the land, and his, his group valued the land at 900,000, and that the River Vista project valued the land at 450,000, was asking for a $350,000 write-off and only paying 100,000. And I thought, okay, that's a big difference between 450,000 and 900,000. So I contacted various members of the city staff who were extremely responsive, and I'd like to thank them for their uh, assistance and help in finding the answers. My main question was, was there ever an independent audit of this land? And the answer was no. And that struck me as something that's very important for the taxpayers to have. They need to have that. They need to know that you have that and that we're getting the best for their tax dollars that we can. So then I began to say, how, looked back at what John found, and I found that John had uh, made comparisons between the Watkins property that is very close by and uh, sold in 2008 to the city. I looked at what that sold for, and that sold for $8.50 a square foot. Again, we have a huge gap. $8.50 for the Watkins pro property and $0.47 cents per square foot on the left bank property. I don't think the taxpayers are being well served here. We would benefit from slowing this process down, getting an independent appraisal, and putting the property up for auction. And, and that's um, what I hope that you guys will do today. I'll be happy to take any questions. Are there any questions? No questions. Thank you, Ms. Estes. Thank you. <clears throat> Next person. Good morning, Mr. Mayor and members of the Wichita City Council. I am not opposed to real estate development downtown or for that matter anywhere in the Wichita area. I know from my personal experience in the real estate that real estate development creates jobs, expands the tax base, and provides a positive engine for economic uplift for our community. I hardly support this type of economic uplift. Downtown development officials tell us that it costs more to redevelop downtown property due to the costs and efforts associated with the land assembly of smaller parcels with multiple property ownership into larger parcels with enough size to build significant projects on. Thus, they tout the need for public incentives. Once all the work, effort, and expenses of assembling land is completed, particularly downtown land, into larger parcels, 
I believe the need for public incentives can be eliminated, or at least, at a minimum, sharply reduced. I believe the City of Wichita's own purchase of the 9.179 acre parcel of land from Key Construction on June 13, 2008 bears this out. This land was purchased by the City for the proposed new public library and or potential future development. The information I obtained from a request from the City of Wichita shows that the City paid in the range of $8.50, $8.50 per square foot for this parcel, plus there was other consideration involving the transfer of other real estate and for cleanup work to the site. It appears to me that through the sale and closing of this transaction that privately owned parcels of assembled downtown real estate have, have significant real market value when they are owned and sold by the private sector owners. Unfortunately, the same doesn't seem to be the case when city officials sell publicly owned city land. Today, you're considering accepting or rejecting one or both of two development proposals for, for private, from private sector re developers for the 4.92 acres of assembled, prime, riverfront, path of progress, publicly owned West Bank land. Both of the proposals require significant, substantial public incentive financing structure and in a manner that suggests less than market value for this for proposals for this city-owned parcel of land. What caught my attention was, was the proposal offered by the develop, development partnership that included a key construction owner. This offer included a $100,000 cash payment for the land. This offer nets out at approximately 47 cents per square foot for the land. The second offer, involves a dollar per square foot, a dollar <coughs> per year for 99 years. And this is reminiscent of, of prior proposals, 2002 for the water walk uh, lease uh, of, of assembled riverfront property. And then in recent months, uh, 4.4 acres was added to this $1 a year lease. Uh, and the city officials at that time reported the public cost of over 900,000 for those assembled parcels. I have read about the controversy surrounding the bidding process involving the two proposals for this prime West Bank property. I believe your challenge today is to represent the public taxpayer's best interest. The simplest solution, in my mind, is to reject both bids and offer the land to the highest bidder without public incentive. I'm reminded of a recent uh, event that happened over across the street in Sedgwick County when the, when the staff, Sudbury County staff brought a, a, a communication tire proposal in the range of $250,000 for county, county commission approval. The county commission at that time rejected that, that offer and, and required that the, the, the property be offered out uh, uh, to everyone. The resulting bid process on that brought in, in the, in the range of $650,000. Who was the winner on that? I, I say the taxpayers and the citizens of our county won there. The simplest solution is to reject both bids and offer the land to the highest bidder. Or at a minimum, if you decide to go forward with one of these, one of the two offers, I would suggest that you include an independent fee appraisal to determine the value of this publicly owned land that's being offered in either transaction. Thank you. Are there any questions? No questions. Thank you, Mayor, Council, Bob Weeks, 2451 Regency Lakes Court in Wichita. I think I heard Mr. Knabel in his remarks uh, re mention the remarkable similarity between these two projects. I think that's very curious there. I'll just let that go at that. My main concern right now is the evaluation matrix on, on the developers, especially the ownership team of the River Vista project. And when you look at the publicly available information and quotes from the very members of this council, we have to really wonder whether that evaluation matrix is meaningful. Uh, for example, uh, two of the evaluation criteria of the developers are, first of all, past project experience with the city of Wichita, and then references, especially from other municipal partners. And this development 
tournament team, River Vista, was awarded the maximum number of points possible for each. Well, here's why we ought to be concerned about that. Uh, last year, the Wichita Eagle reported, uh, we need to get rid of b uh, no bid contracts because Dave Wells, one of the partners in this and president of Key Construction, two parking garages, I think the word is spiral uh, that uh, the reporter used over costs there, um, uh, two no bid contract projects uh, out of control. So did we consider that when we gave Key Construction and Dave Wells the highest possible number of points in past experience? When we look at Dave Burke and Dave Wells together, these two were original partners in Water Walk, something that's received over $40 million of public subsidy. And I think even the Goody Clancy firm recognized that this has been an underperforming uh, project. So did we take that into account when we gave them the maximum number of points uh, possible? When we take Dave Burke by himself, you know, he's received a lot of subsidy from Wichita, but a couple years ago, the Wichita Eagle reported that, and I quote here, um, officials in the city legal department said that while Burke was within his rights to appeal taxes on another city-supported building in the Cinema Plaza, he did not have authorization to file an appeal on the city-owned parking retail space he leases. And uh, Mr. Riebenstorf, our city attorney, says, I have a problem with it, intending adding that he intends to investigate further. That's Dave Burke representing himself as a representative of the city of Wichita Eagle. Council Member Longwell said, we should take issue with that. Council Member Williams, right now it doesn't look good, she said. Are we happy about it? Absolutely not. And Mr. Layton, the SAR city manager, said everyone has the right to appeal their taxes. But he added that, no doubt, that defeats the purpose of the TIF. So did we take that a negative information about Mr. Burke into account? Publicly available information you can get from the newspaper when we gave this team the glowing recommendation. And then Mr. Warren, a beneficiary of a TIF district uh, to build a theater in downtown and then not doing well, we give him a low interest, no interest loan that uh, the Wichita Eagle estimated would cost as much as $1.2 million. So there's an example of Mr. Warren working and his partners, by the way, Dave Wells, Dave Burke, there's those names again, working in a public-private partnership with the city of Wichita and we had to issue a bailout that cost us over a million dollars. Was that information considered by the evaluation committee when they gave this development team the glowing recommendation that they did? So I have no confidence in the recommendation of that board. I don't think the city council should either. We need to take these type of things into account. I'd be happy to answer questions if there's still time. Okay. Are there any questions for Mr. Wheat? No questions. Thank you, Mayor. Next person.